Vault Hunters, Bandits, Corporations, and nobody loser types? Well, you don't know Skek Diddly. Take Promethea, for example. A civilized place, as far as planetary-sized piles of excrement go. A planet still recovering from its war with the Malawan Corporation. The rival Atlas Corporation is in bad shape. Reese Strongfork, the big shot CEO with the regrettable mustache, is scrambling. He's on the cusp of something big. But he's not the only one. And into this pressure cooker steps... Dr. Anuradha Dar, genius inventor, socially awkward, uh, do-gooder type. She works for Atlas, been tinkering with a big, award-winning idea. Her brother, Octavio Wallace Dar, Meridian City's most well-known man, at least in his own mind. He's convinced his big break is just around the corner. And Fran Miskowitz, purveyor of Reese Strongfork's favorite Froger flavor. She's hoping for a big insurance payout after that regrettable Malawan laser incident. So, you're probably asking yourself, what makes these three so special? And the answer is nothing. Yet. You're free now. Go. Run! Oh, no. Run! Morning! What? Oh, I mean... Good morning. Seriously. Again? Yep. Another busy day. Work, work, work. Am I right? By channeling the Iridium's energy through a multiphasic refraction lens, I can reproduce the, as yet, inexplicable powers of the Sirens. Maybe not the wings thing, which is so cool, but uh, crucially, the ability to manipulate an object safely through space-time. I'm Anu, the ultimate Siren fangirl, but for totally scientific reasons, I swear, and I'm so close to replicating the signature move of my all-time favorite siren, Lilith. R.I.P. Pong. <laughs> Anu. As I was saying, in addition to forever altering the nature of conflict vis-a-vis -vis offering a non-lethal resolution, my device could also change the world. For the better. Imagine, a way for people to solve their problems without killing each other. I literally can't. I just have to figure out how to actually bring back the objects I phased away. And also, where they go. And also, what happens to them? Simple. Interdepartmental demonstration scheduled for two weeks from today. Dr. Anuradha Dar signing off. Oh, snap. Two weeks? Really? It's going to be ready by then? You always seem so hesitant to put a timeline on this bad boy, so you know, two weeks. Wow. It is. Or it will be. Surely two weeks is enough time for a huge breakthrough, right? Probably, right? Sure. I should have said three months. What was I thinking? All I've got to do is just figure out the next step. That's it. There's got to be something I'm missing. Figure it out with, like, your intuition or with your tech goggles? I would like to think both. Maybe start with the tech goggles, though. There's a button? On the side? Okay, goggles. 
Let's try a diagnostic. So, for starters, I should probably put an actual power source in there, huh? You needed the goggles for that. Now, where did I put that iridium ore? Now, if it were me, I'd have it on my desk. Line of sight at all times. But that's just me. Would a clearer headed Anu have stored the iridium in here before calling it tonight? You know, being absent-minded, messy, and disorganized are signs of a genius. I think. I hope. Now that I look at the Jabberman translator with fresh eyes, I realize I may have made a miscalculation in the translation matrix. For all I know, they could have been spouting philosophy. to have the iridium ore in your pocket? What? No, of course not. Why would I keep iridium in my pocket? Your pocket just seems full. <laughs> oh, don't get cheeky with me, boss. Not unless you mean it. What? No. And would a clearer-headed Anu remember the code to her safe for once? <laughs> I remember you securing it a while ago. You said, I'll definitely remember where it is.
Better grab some money for lunch while I've got this bad boy unlocked. Did you say lunch? You buying? It'd be great if you found that iridium shard because you're the only person who knows where it is. My trusty tools. So much potential for science in these simple implements. And what's that? Oh, Anu, really? an incredibly expensive ore inside the toolbox again, didn't you? Uh, maybe. <clears throat> yep. yep. <sighs> I love that hum. It's like it's singing. Like a siren song? It's the sound of a successful invention. One that finally gets us out of trouble with Reese Strongfork. One that changes the world. Just picture it, Fong. We are on the cusp of a world with less bloodshed. Where we use innovation and technology to help people and protect life, not casually destroy it as a matter, of course. Like, like, don't oh, you know? I know, like profit-focused warmongers with no moral compass beyond the almighty dollar. Exactly. AKA Atlas's motto. No cruelty, no killing, no compromise. You're a revolutionary, boss. Ooh, who are we rising up against? <laughs> Not that kind of revolutionary, Timmy. Don't worry. I won't. Revolutions typically generate a 30% increase in market share. Good for business! In fact, the only thing better for business than revolutions are the vicious campaigns of suppression by the ruling elite that inexorably... That's reprehensible. It is? Yes. I'm reprehensible? You are if profiting off suffering excites you. Oh. Uh, I'm learning so much today. Right. Anyway, are you here for something in particular, Timmy? Yes, please. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Strongfork to inquire why our company's test subjects are so liberated. I'm sorry, test subjects? The Jabbers. Liberated. Correct. Your comprehension level is impeccable. You should have no trouble explaining why the Jabbers are loose. Again. They're currently running amok down the laboratory hallways. The janitorial staff is prepping for what I like to call Go Jabber Grabber Talk! Oh! Are the Jabber cages empty? They are! Weird! That's so weird! That you released them? It is! A bit. But you have no proof. The thing is, every use of credentials to access a security feature is locked. We have a record of your ID being used to open the cages. Someone else could have grabbed it. The other thing is, our security surveillance system filmed you doing it. If it's any consolation, the footage from this instant was captured at a much more flattering angle than the footage of you releasing the jabbers those other times.
You know what they say about jobbers. If you lock them in a room with a typewriter, they'll eventually learn how to fake digital signatures and open their own cages. From a statistical standpoint, that is unlikely. Also, no one says that. Also, what is a typewriter? Well, now that we've got that straightened out. Ah, Dr. Dar, you have an update to your calendar incoming. It's an appointment with Mr. Strongfork. Oh, uh, I can check my schedule to see. The appointment is now. Oh, and, uh, what is it regarding? It's a reprimand session for Mr. Strongfork to reprimand you. Oh. Wait, better not go empty handed? Good luck. Octavio. Oh, Nedster! School's out already? Hey, Papa Girardi! I can smell your space calzones from here! Ah, thanks! I, I need a new name for them. Might also need to stop doing that problematic accent. Yeah, I, I know. Miss Johnson, did you get a cybernetic leg? That thing's straight fire. Jesse, how's it hanging, dude? Oh, you know, Octavio, it's a brand new day filled with endless possibilities and excitement. Sounds like it. New Agorex, who it is? <laughs> Another new device? Come on, Octavio. It's Radon. But listen, I'm almost done with this demolition job. <laughs> Wanna head to Paco's for tacos? Come on, it's not like you have a real job or anything. I love tacos. They're portable, they're festive. <laughs> of course I'm in. Yeah, I can tell you're giving them some thought. I'll see you there. Octavia. God, jeez! I anticipated your arrival and have them waiting in a location that would not obstruct others. No, no, I, I wasn't scared. <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> Your biometrics appear otherwise. Your voice resembles a nine-year-old girl's. Nine-year... <clears throat> Nine-year-old girls are the future, so thank you. I acquired the publication you requested. You appear stunned. Did you doubt my ability to purchase this periodical? Or do you fear its contents? Yeah, sorry. This issue always makes me a little nervous. Come on, come on, come on! Your biometrics read extreme disappointment. It's Forge's super successful Dirty 30. It lists the planet's most promising, innovative entrepreneurs, and I'm not on it, again. Have you accomplished some extraordinary business transaction to warrant your acknowledgement on this list? I survived Malawan's invasion. And I'd like to think that my social influence has kept the city together after the war left it in damn near ruins. No would have been a more succinct answer. Look, I'm working on it. Why? This list is merely the opinion of other humans. You should not value it. As a machine, 
I find this accolade pointless to strive for. Even if I didn't care, everyone else does, which makes it important. It's my only hope of breaking into the business world. Seeking the approval of others seldom leads to happiness. How would you know? You're an assassination bot. Trained in how to hurt people. What does that have to do with- You seek outside approval because you hate yourself. <laughs> Perhaps you are disappointed, but look on the bright side. Many of these celebrated humans have contracts on their heads. Bivington Bradwick, for example, has numerous bounties on his life, but no assassination bot can kill him. He is rich and important enough that he never has to leave his home or do anything for himself. You, however, are not on this list. You're anonymous, unrecognized, a nobody. This is beneficial for your survival. But not beneficial for my image. I mean, all the best business people have probably at least killed someone to succeed. Something to warn a bounty, anyway. I'm doing whatever it takes to maintain appearances. Come on, if there was a list of all the best assassination bots, wouldn't you want to be on it? No. I pour my heart and soul, confide my lifelong ambition to be on this list, and you act all superior robot on me. But I am a superior robot. I have killed 963 people. You have killed no one. Don't diminish my potential. It's not that I couldn't kill. I could, if that's what it took. Despite your erratic behavior today, I am in need of your assistance. Sorry, I'm busy networking, innovating, shaking hands. After Malawan killed nearly half the merchants in the city, we've all needed to make new contacts. This would be an actual job, with money. Your various business concepts like financing, marketing, public appeal. Kidding! <laughs> I'm not busy. Totally pranked you. <laughs> you just got octavio Interesting phrasing. Perhaps I'll adopt that. Uh, well, that's kind of my thing, but... Now, on to business matters. You will aid me, as you have before, in confirming the names of my targets before I shoot two ion slugs into their brain. You know how to talk. You have a mouth. You will prove exceptional. Will I be... killing anyone? All assassinations will be done by me, as prescribed by the Assassination Bots Guild. We have a strong labor union. Whatever it takes to get my business off the ground. Do you actually have an idea for your business? Tons! A few. I'm working on it! Kissing rat ass. Congratulations, Francine Miskowitz. It has been 90 days since your last uncontrolled outburst of rage. All right, all right. Let's make it to 91. Get to work. Take pride in your ability to maintain a positive attitude even though a Malawan space laser decimated your Frogert shop and subsequently reduced its Echo Net Yowl rating by 3.5 stars. Thank you, Sponsorbot. Your Yowl rating is now negative 3.5 stars. Thank you, sponsor bot. As soon as the insurance money comes in, this place will look good as new. Warning, do not think about your malfunctioning TDR appliances, for which you still owe the TDR Corporation 600,000 galactic credits. 
think about the fact that these machines are also licensed from Teteor and thus cannot be sold. Isn't it your job to keep me from losing my cool? Do not think on the fact that unless your next Kroger flavor is diamonds, the interest on your debt will keep pace with your revenue and you shall be forever drowning in an ocean of capitalist indifference. Congratulations! You are not thinking about it! Son of a... You don't have to do this! You have a choice! Think before you act! Oh no. Oh jeez. It has been zero days. Sure. I'm fine. It's not a backslide. Oh, it's a backslide. All the way back to pure animal rage. Everything is going to be just fine. My new slaughter o -matic combat vegetable knife slices artichokes as easily as arteries. <clears throat> We're not open yet. And... Lore. How's business treating you, handsome? Not bad. If there's two things you can count on Prometheans buying, it's bullets and brew. Place looks as charming as ever. I thought the insurance money was supposed to come through by now. Claims guys coming by today, they've been jerking me around, saying I have to pass some sort of final interview to get my cash. How dare they not trust a kind old lady like you? Want me to shoot them? It's been a while since I shot anyone. A week, at least. Still, I'm a steady trigger, so long as I've got some caffeine in me. Yeah, go for it. There are precious few problems a couple of well-placed bullets can't solve. They teach you that in the military? If by teach, you mean repeatedly scream at me, and if by military, you mean mom, then yes. Right. Well, just tell me who to shoot and where to shoot them, and I'll have it done by end of business today. Thanks for this, by the by. Samesies. Uh-oh. Looks like the morning rush has arrived. I'm outie. All right, all right, all right. Time to make the Frogerts. Morning, welcome to Franz Frogert's. What can I get you today, hon? Uh, a large peanutty buddy with sprinkles. Here you go, sweetheart. Whoa, this looks incredible, Fran. I know, babe. inform him of your presence. Just 
Apologize for the jabbers. Won't happen again, sir. You cannot lose this job. My idea is a paradigm shift. One that could help Atlas beat the competition. Yeah, that sounds great. Convincing. Job saving. Right? Timmy, tell Dr. Dar I'll see her now. Dr. Dar? Hello, sir. Uh, Mr. Strongfork. Uh, is everything all right? Because I can come back if... No, no, no. Everything's fine. It's fine. I just got outbid again on an ultra-rare Zero Vault Landers figurine. Again. It's an investment, you know, you know, you know what, forget it, never, never, never mind, just, just, come on in, have a seat. Thanks for coming up on such short notice, but I figured I ought to just set a meeting as quickly as possible so we could touch base on the issue of you keep releasing jabbers on the ship, again! You've got to stop doing that. And also, we're in space. We're all contained animals up here, Dr. Dar. Honestly, sir, I think this has all just been one big misunderstanding. Oh, yeah? Crazy. <laughs> Let's just get this all sorted out then. So silly of me. <laughs> Yikes. Did you not release a lab full of jabbers? Again? No. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, you did. You cost me a fortune. Do you have any idea? Any? I have guys in R&D working on cold fusion-powered giant robots who spend less money than you've wasted on freeing animals from their cages. And Iridium ore. Oh my god, the Iridium ore! If I'd seen any evidence at all, a shred of it, that you had been using that Iridium ore to make something that, you know, we could sell or patent or eat, I wouldn't care, but... Now that... Is a pretty interesting little gun there, huh? Look at it all gun-shaped. This is no gun, Mr. Strongfork. This is my... device. Okay. This device. Gun. This device is going to achieve something no one ever has. Something no one has come close to. Replicating the powers of a siren with the pull of a trigger. Now that's a pitch. Keep going, keep going. I'm serious. This is exciting. The Cold Fusion Robot guys, they give a fun presentation, but it's always, you know, a little, a little much. This is the most powerful man-made creation in the world. You need this, and you need me. Ooh, assertive. That's good. It's wrong, but it's good. Sorry? Anything you develop on Atlas property with Atlas money belongs to Atlas, so I don't technically need you to have that. But like I said, the, you know, the raw energy, that's great. Right. Okay, decent pitch. I give it a C minus. Enough to not get you fired. Yet. So, I'm gonna need a demonstration to see what this adorable little game changer of yours can do. Absolutely, sir. If you have space in your schedule in two weeks' time... No? I meant now. There's no time like the present, right? So, present! But I haven't... It hasn't... It's in progress, and... It doesn't do anything, does it? No, no, it, it does. Just let me explain. Oh, by all means. And by all means, I mean this had better be really, really good, or you're fired. It's an energy manipulator, designed to move any tangible subject through space-time. Move through? Transport, yes. It's a phase-walk gun? It's a phase-walk device. A phaser. A phaser? A totally non-lethal, utterly decisive way to end any conflict. Wait, 
Non? Lethal? Yes. So, to clarify, you have spent all the money and resources at your disposal that I gave you, from my disposal, to build a gun that does not kill people? I've built a device. Gun. Device that doesn't kill. It just sends people on a little vacation. A vacation to death? No, just a vacation. They literally vacate. Our customers don't want to send people on vacation. They want to send them to death. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what? Show me. Show me or put it on the desk and leave my office. Okay. I, uh, I think you're really going to like this, sir. <sighs> I am waiting to be deeply... Deeply impressed here. I mean, floored, really, at this point, and I, <laughs> I've seen some shit, so... Bar is high. Oh my god. Oh my god! Right? That wasn't the blast, dummy! It was my... It was on display! I can't... Oh, oh my god. Oh. oh. Okay, okay, okay. Impressive. It's very impressive. Now, you know, reverse phase. <laughs> Unzap. De-eliminate. Bring it back. There's no reverse switch, sir. It only does the one thing, so far. It's a prototype. Well, where the hell did it send my stuff? I, uh, do not know. <laughs> so it's just... Gone? Gone forever. Like so many fabric scraps in the wind. Coasting through the ether. I'll never see that tie again. I can get you some electrical things, sir. It won't be the same. Uh, Mr. Strongfork! CEO of the Atlas Company. I am your assistant. Uh, yeah, Timmy, I know. Then now... It's my time to shine! Let me assist you! Wait, 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 Timmy, what? I will go on a quest to retrieve what you have lost, uh? Rescue mission! You would do that? For me? Of course I would! Mr. Strongfork! CEO of the Atlas Company, doing anything and everything for you is literally the purpose of my existence. Yikes. Yeah, well, that's a fair point, actually. All right. Dr. Dar, let's try this again. On Timmy. I'm ready! Timmy? Timmy! If he doesn't come back, you'll be hearing from me. Specifically the sound of my tears. He'll definitely come back. I think. Someday. Can I just say, for a gun... Device. ...that's designed to be non-lethal, that thing is really doing some damage. Thank... you? Not a compliment. You can't control it. You barely know what it does, except that it doesn't kill things, which makes it useless. It isn't designed to kill. Not everything needs to harm people. I feel harmed. I feel very personally harmed. Just not in a way that's profitable. Oh my god, why? Oh, Timmy, where are you when I need you most? <sighs> You've reached Reese Strongfork, the CEO of Atlas Corporation. Well, well. If it isn't Reese Strongfork. <laughs> Susan Coldwell, CEO of TDR. Why? Why are you calling me? You know what? Can you hold on for just a sec? Dr. Dar, you may go. And if it wasn't clear already, uh, you're fired. But, sir... <laughs> Susan, how'd they hang in? <laughs> Perky as ever, Reese. And you? Eyes and limbs all accounted for? Oh, 
Yep, all good over here, doing just great. Better then. Was there, uh, something you needed? You know the drill. I can't kill my target until they say their full name out loud, and I am able to confirm its match against the name in the database. That's where you come in. So you must get my target to say their full name out loud. I'm guessing from your line of work, you don't have a lot of friends. You are the closest thing I would consider a friend. I do not see you in opposition to my programming. It might be due to your frail build and anemic complexion. Super. What did they do, whoever you're about to kill? A man named Jamison Harwin kicked his neighbor's pet scat pup. So the neighbor contracted me to punish him. Skags are adorable. This dude deserves to burn the ninth circle of hell. Truly? Hmm. I suppose that makes me feel slightly better about the job then. Do you have any further questions before we begin the operation? It shouldn't take long. I just gotta know. Why do you do this? Kill people for money, I mean. It is what I was programmed for. Haven't you ever wanted more from life? Yes. Like what? That is beyond the scope of my perception. I literally cannot even begin to articulate it to you. It would be like describing a fifth dimension. Oh. Okay. Jamison Harwin lives in that apartment complex. You will use the buzzer for apartment three to get him to come outside. I will be waiting nearby, with death. All right, let's get the skag kicking piece of crap. Sweepstakes, and I'm here to inform you that you are a mega winner. Huh? I didn't enter any sweepstakes. Oh, well, in that case, I guess I'll have to deliver this oversized novelty check to somebody else. Hey, where's the nearest oversized novelty bank? Wait. I, uh, yeah, I just remembered. I did enter that sweepstakes. I'll be right down. While I must admit your methods are strange, it seems to have worked. Now you must get him to say his full name before I can fulfill the contract. No problem. Give it here, kid. What gives? I come all the way down here and you don't even got it? You better not be messing with me, boy. I got a hell of a temper. This is a trick. I lured you down here in a plot to kill you. I'm sorry, please don't kill- Already wasted too much of my damn time. Back to TV. <laughs> I'm just fibbing. I'm a fibber. <laughs> 